Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at a free-to-play shooter called Cerverium. It's being developed by a Ukrainian company called Vostok, and in many ways I believe this is a spiritual successor to the game Stalker. Now I believe the intention is to have multiple game modes when this finally comes out with a larger MMO style game world that you might be able to explore or roam around freely and uh, investigate anomalies and that kind of thing, but currently the only game mode you can play is the PvP mode on Online, which is basically TDM. I mean, they have a conquest style game mode, but it pretty much just plays out like TDM would anyway, with basic objectives littered around the map. Now, what initially attracted me to this game is basically the look of it, the uh, kind of blown out post apocalyptic feel. Your kit is made up of like found objects and gear, and you're using kind of worn out old Soviet style weapons, which is pretty cool. I mean, one of my favorite guns that I was using the whole time was the Mosin, and that thing is just a beast. It's a powerful bolt action rifle, but it's been around forever, uh, and it looks like it in game too. That's what I like a lot about the visual styling of the game. Everything you're using just looks totally worn out and battered. The maps themselves fit into the same kind of style. Everything is totally overgrown and unused and it's basically like nature is coming back and just taking over these city environments once again. And the graphics in this game can look pretty good when you turn them all the way up but I was having a lot of frame inconsistency so I ended up turning them all the way down just so I could get a decent frame rate to play the game. Now when you first jump into the PvP you're forced to pick a faction and as you play the game you'll not only level up your character giving them uh, stat points so like in Diablo or any MMO you can kind of put your stat points into abilities like being able to reload faster or aim down sight quicker uh, but when you pick your faction you'll also get faction reputation and that will allow you to buy better guns as you progress up through that faction which is kind of cool um, so far I haven't noticed anything that seems to be way too overpowered but then again I haven't played against any super high ranking players yet now initially I thought that tying in your rank to things like being able to reload faster than your opponents was a little bit unfair and would create too much of a skill gap uh, in the multiplayer world, but fortunately the devs have toned it down a bit so that when you upgrade things like aiming down sight faster, it's only like a 2% bonus each time you rank it up and you can only do it 5 times, so at the highest level you can get like a 10% ADS bonus, which is something, but it's not necessarily going to make one player amazing and another player not very good at all. And from what I can tell so far with the in-game menu system, there is a lot of options to buy things with cash, but I believe you can get a lot of it just by playing the game normally. Uh, there are some pretty uh, high-end weapons that you can get, but most of the main bonuses that the cash bot weapons will give you is just like XP bonuses and stuff like that. So you'll rank up faster if you spend money. And that seems to be a fairly consistent trend with free-to-play games. As long as they're not giving you some sort of uh, huge tactical advantage by spending money over people who don't spend any money. Now the basic formula really seems to be there. You have to play a lot to rank up higher to get higher level guns and use those in PvP and supposedly there is a matchmaking system although there's so few players playing this game right now that it'll match up low ranking players against high ranking players pretty uh, consistently which is just an unfortunate element to having a very low population game right now. Maybe the pop will spike when the game actually comes out for real but there are some pretty big issues with the game right now which might prevent this game from ever succeeding. One of the main ones that you will see a lot of complaining about in the Severian forums and on the Steam review section is the prevalence of hackers and the fact that the devs don't seem to be doing a lot about them right now. Currently you can report hackers when you see them and it seems totally nest to already have a hacker reporting system in a game when it's in its beta form but I've already run into multiple hackers and it was totally obvious that they were wall hacking and just totally exploiting the game, which really sucks this early on in any game's development to have such a high quantity of people exploiting and just ruining the experience for everyone. And the guy you're watching right here is just using a wall hack and probably aimbot, but I've heard other people talking about running into players that have hacked their health, so they're pretty much unkillable and that will totally kill a game in the start if the devs can't nail down the hacking. 
Now the other issue with this game, and it's a lot worse than the hacking issue, is server stability and crashing. I basically got kicked from a lot of servers for server stability and then had weird crashing issues related to graphics malfunctioning. This one here is me just getting kicked to the lobby of the game without any warning and then just having to quit the game before I can actually play again. This happened to me quite a few times and I'm not sure if it was partially because I wasn't able to join as many North American servers as I wanted to even though I had that only selected on my server filter but uh, also the character models and the player models were just jumping all over the place so it made it incredibly hard to track targets and hit them consistently. A lot of these server issues and bugs seem like they should have been something that was taken care of in an alpha version of the build not a beta version where people are already spending money to buy items and unlock things. The game is just way too unstable in its current state to be considered a beta in my mind anyway even though the concept of a beta has expanded so much these days with current game development. It used to actually mean that the game had all the features and all the cool stuff was implemented and they were merely just polishing the game not trying to get it to work on a basic level. And it's really unfortunate that this game is in such a crummy state right now because the art design is amazing and so much about the game design in general and the concept behind it are cool things, things that I want to see more of. And I've been reading a bunch of the reviews on Steam and a lot of people seem to have come to the same conclusion that the game has great potential but in its current state it is not a lot of fun to play and it is buggy as hell. And it is a very small glimpse into what the game could be with the larger open world side to it I imagine something more akin to what Destiny is now maybe with like some mission systems and some cool exploration and finding artifacts and anomalies throughout this post-apocalyptic world. I love the idea behind it and the theme of it is very similar to say Fallout except without any sort of lock on or slow time combat so I love everything about it it just needs to work and unfortunately right now it just isn't and it doesn't look like it's anywhere close to being a good or finished well polished product. So conceptually I'm in love with the game. Gameplay wise it's fun, sound design is amazing, the artwork is really good but it is just failing on a technical level. If you want to check it out by all means go for it but I wouldn't recommend spending a dime in this game until we see how it pans out. As always guys thanks for watching and I'll see you next time this is Level Cap. Signing off.